my name is Emma and today I'm going to be reviewing The Girls by Emma Klein. A few months ago I had heard about this book that had some kind of tie to the Manson family and so from there my mind like immediately was hooked on it until I just picked it up. So obviously when we have this somewhat fictional retelling of this cult I'm of course going to be interested. The Girls is essentially a book about 14 year old Evie who is living in Northern California at the end of the 1960s and she's kind of in a slump with her life. She doesn't have that many friends, her parents are divorced and she doesn't have a great relationship with either parent. She's just kind of going through the motions with life until one day she stops in the park and she sees these girls in like this rugged dress with this era of just freedom surrounding them. Evie is immediately entranced, especially by 17 year old Suzanne and very quickly Evie finds herself swept up in life at this ranch centered around this aspiring musician named Russell. As Evie's obsession with Suzanne intensifies, she finds herself so caught up in this cult lifestyle that she's not prepared for the end game that's approaching. Now as I already stated, it obviously has a very heavy influence of the infamous Manson cult and because this is a topic I have spent more than like half a decade researching, I was very inclined to pick it up. I ended up giving the girls 4.5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved this book and I seriously could not put it down. I do want to put a disclaimer me here that this is an adult book so if mature content like drugs sex and profane language or something that makes you uncomfortable to read about I would definitely recommend straying away from this one because it obviously is pretty ingrained into this book this review is for the most part going to be spoiler free. I did ask on Goodreads if you wanted a spoiler free review or a spoiler re review and while I feel like most of my thoughts are spoiler free I have a few to include at the end but I will let you know when those spoilers are coming but you can watch virtually this whole review for the most part. Now the writing in this book was just absolutely delectable. It was definitely something I had trouble getting used to at first because I'm not used to reading this extensive, elaborate, exquisite writing, even with adult books which happen to be a lot more developed writing than a lot of the YA books I read, but in the end I absolutely loved it. Also with the writing, this is kind of a dual tense book. Mostly we have the story from 14 year old Evie's perspective, but at the beginning of each part of the story we have a chapter from present Evie's point of view and she's kind of reflecting back on that summer and like where she is in life now. Personally I did not really enjoy present Evie's chapters. I'm kind of grateful that they were actually very short because I don't feel like it greatly contributed to the story. I personally would have preferred the book to be told entirely from 14 year old Evie's perspective in 1969 just because I feel like those present chapters didn't really have a lot of substance compared to the rest of the book and it probably could have stood on its own without it. So as I state in almost every single review I do, I'm a plot based reader. I love really strong plots, but with the girls I feel like the plot is actually fairly weak, though I think it does have a purpose. For the most part the plot is extremely leveled and consistent and it doesn't really move up and down for any of the story, it kind of just stays at the same place. It could be because I was already so invested in the subject matter of the novel, but the fact that it had this fairly unexciting plot didn't really alter my enjoyment of the story and I was still so interested to see what happened next. The focus of the book is not the adventures this family goes on, it's mostly focused on Evie's character and her growth and her reactions to the people that she meets and hangs out with this summer. On the topic of characters, I feel like the girls is super cool because I did not find a single likable character in it. I was totally interested in everyone. Every single character had their own distinctive voice and something that made them different, but while reading there wasn't a character I really came away with saying that I really liked them and I think that's super important. This is one of those books where the characters are meant to be unlikable. It is intended for them to be immensely flawed for us to blatantly see. There is no glamorization of the cult and that's really important to me. It's very clear in the book that this is a group of social rejects of outlaws and criminals and murderers who are dirty and unkempt. They eat from a dumpster and they steal to survive and they did all of this out of a blind following to a manipulative man. There's unfortunately a large amount of people who glamorize and romanticize situations like this concerning cults and serial killers and the like, and I just find it really admirable that Emma Klein was able to tell a story like this that is so focused on all of the ugly that it doesn't kind of leave any of those feelings for anyone to interpret the story that way. On the topic of characters, I do want to say that Russell was like the perfect reincarnation of Charles Manson. The execution was flawless and so true to the actual persona of of Charlie Manson and I was honestly just taken aback with how well represented all of his different layers were. From the way he repeats Evie's name to make her feel recognized and welcome and important to his casual constant touching of her to break down boundaries, the manipulation techniques of Russell were so well translated into the story. 
story. Something else I really enjoyed about the story is how it's about Evie's infatuation with Suzanne and not with Russell. A common theme of me reading this book was this isn't what I wanted it to be but I actually kind of like this better. I thought I wanted a story about a girl that was entranced by this cult leader but it was so much more interesting to read about a girl who got involved with this because of another girl. Evie's obviously a lesbian if that wasn't clear. Russell is surprisingly more of a background character and we learn about him through the cult members like Suzanne rather than just having his constant presence. I never really got the feeling that Evie had any interest in Russell at all. It was very clear from the beginning that she only stuck around for Suzanne and I found that really fascinating. It made the story powerful in a different way that we were exposed to this not from the cult leaders mechanisms but through the actual cult members. We still get to see that cult brainwashedness from characters like Suzanne and Donna and Helen and just seeing the way that they react to Russell or even just to the mention of his name was crazy well executed but I thought it was so cool to know that Evie wasn't just a carbon copy of them and she wasn't just another cult member, she really was an outsider on the inn. I think one of the most interesting aspects of this story is that while everyone knows the Manson family for the Manson murders, it's not about the killings. When you think about Charlie Manson, most likely your first thought is the Tate and LaBianca murders. What comes after as a second thought is really the cult members and their family and the experiences they had. But that is what the book is about. To me, it was kind of ingenious for Emma Klein to take such an unconventional route to approaching such a well-known part of her history. Most of my infatuation with this family for all of this time has been on the actual crimes they committed, but after reading this book, I have this newfound interest in the relations between all of the different members, and it's not as if like I wasn't interested in that before, I'm just like so much more inclined to do research about that and to kind of understand what that experience was like other than just the murders. That really wraps up all of my spoiler free thoughts on The Girls by Emma Klein. I do have just a few notes that I thought I would make for those of you who have read The Girls, but if you haven't, I would totally recommend checking out this book, coming back here, and we can discuss it more in depth together, but that's really it for the non-spoiler section, and now we're gonna get into some actual book content. So one of the scenes that really stands out to me most vividly of everything in the book is when Evie kind of comes back to the ranch after living with her father for so long, and everyone there is just kind of on edge because because Mitch messed up Russell's record deal. Watching Russell's decline was so fascinating to me. I mean just the imagery of the guitar being out of tune and him rambling and slurring his words while he's singing and just his face, the way that Evie describes that whole moment was super powerful and I feel like it said so much about the story. And it was so interesting to see how none of the other family members actually picked up on this or they weren't faced at all by this difference, but Evie is the one who picks up on the fact that things are changing and they're not really going in the right direction. I feel like scenes like this were just so well executed and I have so much for Emma Klein for that reason. So there's one really kind of insignificant moment in this book that I do want to touch on because I really appreciated the reference. Essentially it's at the very end of the book when Evie is kind of talking a little bit more about um, Russell's decline and what led up to all the murders and it's about how I believe it was like the housekeeper or the gatekeeper or somebody at Mitch's house um, had noticed that Russell would come up to the house and just stare and I'm just like, oh my god, it's the Charlie Manson stare. If you don't know, in the courtroom, Charlie Manson did some crazy things, and one of the things he would do is he would just like stare intently at the jury to kind of like make them uncomfortable and intimidated, um, and it was just more of his manipulation techniques, and I always just found that so funny, like Charlie Manson is so creepy and strange and it's so fascinating so just to have the Charlie Manson stare just put in there for one sentence like fulfilled all of my crazy desires and hopes for this book. I think the most significant spoilery feeling I have on this book is the fact that I would have loved to see Evie actually partake in the murders rather than just being dropped on the side of the road right before they happened. I do understand why this was done because it was never a story about Evie's devotion to Russell which is what the motive behind the murders were. It was about her infatuation with Suzanne and her relationship with that family really ended with her obeying Suzanne once again which I think makes everything come full circle. It also would have made the book so gigantic. I mean again this is a story of the cult and the members of the family and their experiences not the murders so to have a more detailed first-hand account of the murders from Evie's perspective that would have added like another 
hundred pages or so just from that one night and then we would have had to go through the aftermath and then them getting caught and the trials and the sentencing it's not like you could have just stopped right after the night of the murders that would have to be an entirely separate book to put the two stories together would just be so massive and you would end up having a 600 page helter skelter I think there's a lot of people who went into this story expecting it to be the story of a girl killing these people involved in this cult so I think that's why a lot of people were disappointed but I guess I'm just able to accept the fact that that's not what the story was about. I do feel like the actual details of the murder that Evie was telling us were a little rushed. It kind of felt like, ah, uh, I ran out of words. How do I fit six murders into 10 pages? And I do think there was a better way to execute that. It definitely left the ending a bit anticlimactic for me, but it's just one of those instances where I just kind of have to accept that authorial intent was greater than my expectations, and that's totally fine. I have to say, I did not expect Suzanne to show up at the end. It wasn't like I forgot about her existence or anything. I just always kind of got this feeling from the beginning of the book that Suzanne never really cared about Evie, and she was just like a thing or an object to play around with and to have along with her because, I don't know, maybe she liked the attention she was getting because all of her attention was focused on Russell, but I just never thought she cared enough to like check up on Evie afterwards or to ever make any sense of rekindling what was going on between them. I do think that Suzanne showing up to Evie's school was a great asset to the story and it felt like it kind of tied things up more had she not shown up. And I'm also really glad that they ceased contact after that and there was nothing further. It ended where it should have ended and that was really cool to me. So that is really it for my review of The Girls by Emma Klein. I really, really enjoyed this book. I am so happy I finally got to reading it and I'm totally satisfied in ways that I didn't really know I was going to be satisfied in. And I'm just super happy I get the chance to talk about it and recommend it to you guys and hopefully discuss it with you guys in the comments so let me know what you thought of the girls in the comments of this video but that is it thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you soon for a new video bye